Welcome to Now in Android, episode 28. First up, Mad Skills. So the first series of Mad Skills has completed. Mad Skills is, of course, the series of content that we are creating to teach you how to use the various pieces of modern Android development uh, to make it a lot easier to create better applications. So the first mini series on navigation component just finished almost. So tomorrow, I'm recording this on Wednesday. On Thursday, we're having a live Q&A. This is important because it's basically the first one of these that we're hoping to do for the entire series. The intention with the entire Mad Skills series was not just to dump a bunch of content out there, which hopefully uh, you all can learn from, but also to interact. Are you having problems? Do you have questions about how this stuff works? So after each of the mini series, starting with navigation, we're going to have a live Q&A where I will be asking questions of domain experts. Tomorrow, I will be talking to Ian Lake, the engineer behind the navigation components. I have reached out to Twitter uh, and gotten a bunch of questions to ask Ian about. We'll have a conversation about how things work, and hopefully you can join us for the live one, except you're probably seeing this video after it already happened. So I'm mentioning it here because A, there will be a video of it that you can check out and you can see what the Q&A was like that you couldn't join on time. And B, because I want you to try to tune in for the future series, which I'm giving you notice for now so that you can't tell me later that it was too late. So join us tomorrow if you can magically do that and certainly join us in the future. And in the meantime, think about those questions that you have for each of the mini series that we are posting. Uh, next up, we have Android X. So a couple of things going on in Android X. First of all, we posted more libraries out on GitHub. So we have heard from you that you prefer using GitHub as a source repository solution uh, versus the AOSP and Garrett solution, which is a lot more effort and a lot more uncommon for your normal workflows. We totally get it. However, it is very difficult for us to just move over to GitHub because of infrastructure bits that we rely on internally. However, we are taking a look at the situation and we have made some of the libraries available externally to hopefully make it easier to interact with uh, these actively developing uh, libraries. So already we have paging, room, and work manager available with GitHub. And we have recently also added activity, fragment, and navigation. So go ahead and check them out. And if you want to contribute, there is a contributing doc on that site, link in the article. Uh, and you can see what you need to do to actually be a part of contributing to those libraries. There were stable releases that came out for Android X, a handful of those, mostly minor. I did want to call your attention to Media Router 1.2. This one is interesting because it integrates some of the functionality uh, that we enabled in Android 11. So one of the things we did in Android 11 was to take a lot of the media information and put it into a dedicated space in the notification panel. So before, you had the ability as a user to control the media playing experience, but these were notifications that were interleaved with all of the other notifications on your device. Now we have a dedicated media space that uh, resides right below the quick settings where all of the media information is. You don't have to do anything new to take advantage of this. This is just a new user feature in Android 11. So if you're already using media session and media style APIs, which came out around Lollipop, then you should be set. They should just populate the UI in the appropriate place. But there was also some new functionality added uh, in Android 11 for seamless media transfer that makes it easier for your users to change the playback device where the audio is coming from. Uh, this is new functionality in the platform that also has new API functionality and Media Router 1.2 uh, plugs into that new capability for the platform. So check that out uh, if you want to take advantage of that. There were also a bunch of alpha releases and beta and RC as there usually are. I normally don't go into detail on the alpha releases unless it's a brand new thing, but I did want to call your attention to a couple, which are sort of an interesting milestone going forward. So one of the questions that we've gotten a lot recently is, as developers look at the active development going on in architecture components, things like lifecycle, view model, paging, navigation, whatever it is, uh, they think, well, yeah, but then you have this Jetpack Compose thing coming out, so why would I spend my time on this if obviously there's going to be a new solution there? And the answer is because there's not, right? We are trying to solve architectural problems, hard architectural problems with the architecture components, and we expect all of that stuff to carry over into the Jetpack Compose 
world. Uh, most of the stuff, most of the functionality in these libraries has nothing to do with views and the view hierarchy and the existing toolkit system. So it should just transfer over. Uh, we just need to figure out the details of the APIs and how you access that in the new world. So we are doing ongoing effort in all of those libraries to figure that out. And we have some early results along the way. So uh, view models and live data already have examples of this uh, in their libraries where they integrate with Jetpack Compose. And uh, just recently, in fact, just this morning, a couple of hours ago, paging and navigation came out with their first approaches to integration with Jetpack Compose. So check those out. Kotlin Vocabulary, of course, is an ongoing series of content, videos, and articles teaching how various language features work in the Kotlin language. Um, there were some new articles and videos posted on that. First of all, Florina Muntinescu posted a new article and a video on destructuring. So destructuring is a convenient way to assign values from multiple fields in a class or an object uh, to multiple variables. It's just kind of a, a nice way to sort of assign multiple values all at once. Uh, you get this capability automatically from data classes in Kotlin, and uh, the article and video show you how to do that. Um, but you can also build in this capability to any existing classes. You can even add extension functions uh, to build in that capability into arbitrary classes that you want to. Speaking of extension functions, Megan Meta has released a new article on how extension functions work. This is probably my favorite feature of Kotlin because it allows you to keep improving APIs. So maybe you don't have access to the string class directly, but you can add an extension method and basically insert a method that callers can call as if it actually existed on that string class. Uh, so kind of a nice way that makes the end result in code and applications a lot more readable uh, and usable. Uh, let's see, moving on to uh, coroutine. So there was a new article and video, uh, sorry, just a video published by Manuel Vivo uh, on the ABCs of coroutine. So he talked specifically about how things like coroutine scope, coroutine context, dispatchers and jobs work. So maybe not so much the ABCs as the CCDJs of coroutines. Articles and videos. There were other articles and videos worth checking out. First of all, um, there's one from the play team about common policy violations and how to work with them, how to do the right thing for your application. Um, so this is a really tricky area. We are trying to do the right thing on the Play Store for users and making sure that apps are not doing things that users wouldn't get a good experience from. But it can be difficult from the outside as a developer to tell if you got flagged, what exactly the problem was, and then how exactly you are supposed to fix it. So they published this article to help uh, flagging several of the common violations that they have seen, along with information about how to deal with those. Um, examples include UI that links out to the Play Store, uh, descriptions of apps that are really more focused on search terms than they are on summarizing what the application does. Uh, and also a really common one is some apps are basically nothing more than a thin, web view wrapper around a website. Well, that's not the intention with applications on devices. That doesn't bring a good experience to users. Instead, we wanted to actually be an Android app that provides a good experience for the user. So um, these are three of the things. There's more in the article, so check that out for more details. Um, there were a bunch of videos posted from a recent DroidCon conference. So DroidCon did something interesting this time around uh, where it, it, besides just having online presence for um, their events, they also combined a bunch of events. So rather than there being, let's say, a DroidCon London this year, there was a DroidCon EMEA, which was uh, basically a time zone friendly version of DroidCon. Uh, that happened a few weeks ago. A bunch of us gave talks there. A bunch of people in the external community gave talks there. Thank you. Um, and there's a lot of information that's posted in videos on the DroidCon site, so you can check those out. Motion Tags is an ongoing series of uh, screencasts that shows you how to use the various tags in the Motion Layout uh, API as well as Editor. So there were two episodes that came out in that series recently. Episode 7 goes into details on key attribute, uh, which is where you put information about properties of the view, things like transform and alpha. Episode 8 covers key cycle. Um, so this is it has very similar information as uh, as does key attribute, but also adds information about the waveform that can be used uh, during an animation. This allows you changing that waveform uh, allows you to create really complex and interesting animations. 
because this can be tricky to use, there's also a standalone tool that we created that can be uh, can make it easier to actually edit uh, and create these things. Uh, so you can check out the play playlist for motion tags for all of the episodes uh, and certainly the two new ones that just came out. In the training space, uh, there was a new course that came out specifically the the new uh, Android Kotlin Developer Nano degree from Udacity. Um, this helps you learn best practices for building Android apps in Kotlin. I should point out that the Nano degree is a paid service uh, because it's not just course content. Instead, it also provides projects with feedback, uh, mentorship support, and career services from Udacity. However, the underlying content that the course that the Nano degree is created from is free. We work with Udacity on creating that content as well as the overall. Uh, nano degree. Uh, and so you can access that if you just want access to the content, you can check that out uh, with the links in the article. Finally, one podcast posted since the last now in Android. It was the podcast on paging three just posted this morning. Uh, Roman and I chatted with Dustin Lamb and Chris Crick from the toolkit team about the paging three rewrite. So it was a complete rewrite of the library in Kotlin, taking advantage of things like coroutines and flow for this inherently asynchronous behavioring uh, library and technology. Um, so they talked about why they did this, what advantages it has. Um, most of those are internal. I should point out that when I first heard it was being rewritten in Kotlin, I wondered if that meant that you would need to be writing code in Kotlin uh, to access it, and the answer is no. Uh, it does use coroutines and flow. A lot of that is internal. It made it easier to write more elegant and better code internally. Um, and some of that is exposed as API for Kotlin developers, but there is also API uh, that you can access from the Java programming language uh, using RxJava, for example, or other approaches for asynchronous programming. Uh, so check that out for more information on paging three, on Kotlin, on API design. We, we had a wide ranging conversation there. As usual, all of the links to everything I talked about today are in the article, so check that out for the details. And finally, if you like the video, go ahead and like and share and subscribe to the Android Developers channel on YouTube. Thanks.